We want to welcome each of you to the Fifth Ward Church of Christ, and we are thankful that God has blessed all of us yet again to assemble as a called out body of believers. And we come here to praise his name. Is that all right? Uh, we are mindful of uh, Brother Smith, Brother Gary, as he has been called to come and to help others as they might see how they might work together in a great citywide kind of format as we have done over the last uh, several years. Uh, and uh, we're just prayerful that he'll be able to return to us and be with us again uh, shortly. And while he is out, I have been asked to stand in his stead. So I'm thankful for yet another opportunity. I'm going to ask that you open your Bibles to Acts 18, chapter, uh, verse number 9. is where our lesson text will come from. For those of you who are visiting among us, we count it a great joy to have you in our midst. And at the appropriate time, our elders will recognize all of those who are visiting among us. If you've come our way this morning by television, we're certainly thankful that God has blessed you to allow us to come into your home view television. And we just pray that you continue to dial in and uh, call in. Uh, there's a number that will be going across the screen. If we can help and if we can assist you in any way, we are here to serve. Uh, we certainly look forward also to the time when you can come and assemble with this called out body of believers. Uh, we're in the book of Acts, as I mentioned, on chapter 18 and verse number 9. If you will open your Bibles, uh, we'll begin our study this morning, Acts 18 and verse number 9. The Bible says, Then spake the Lord to Paul in the night by a vision, Be not afraid, but speak, and hold not thy peace. The lesson is entitled this morning, Hold Not Thy Peace. When you say hold not your peace, that means talk. <laughs> that means don't be quiet. That means don't sit on the word of God. Apostle Paul had been traveling from one city to the next and city after city after city. He went in and he proclaimed the word of God. And when you preach the word of God, all the time, everybody's not happy that you preach the word of God. And there were people who actually sought to take Apostle Paul's life. And even though people were seeking to take his life, when he went from one city to the other, already in the city of Corinth, he's already been proclaiming the word of God. But sometimes, even when we are proclaiming the word of God, there might be things that are running through our mind, things that we're concerned about, things that we're worried about. And the Lord sent a message to Apostle Paul, and he wanted Paul to know, Paul, don't you worry about a thing. Anybody need that message this morning? Don't you worry about anything. Paul, just do the job that I have called for you to do. Paul, I've sent you among people who have not received the word of God. And I've sent you among people who have received the word of God. Paul, you're in a city with a great opportunity. And I just want to remind you, Paul, hold not your peace. Don't be quiet. Don't hold your peace. He is under order as we are under order from the word of God. Preach the word of God. And we as members of the family of God don't regulate, if you will, the preaching or the teaching of the word of God just from the pulpit. As we go throughout this land and country, as we go throughout this city, all of us are ambassadors of one for Christ to tell somebody, to tell anybody. <laughs> To tell everybody about Jesus, the Christ, the son of the living God. The gospel of Jesus Christ is the only power of God for salvation. It's the only power of God. In Romans chapter 1 in verse number 16, one of those verses of scripture that we quote often over and over again. The Bible says, I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. Is that what it says in your Bible? It says, for it is the power of God. It is the only power of God. It is the power of God unto salvation for how many? Do you understand that? That in your Bible, in my Bible, that the gospel of Jesus Christ is the power for how many? 
to everyone, to all, to everyone that believeth. That is the only power of God that is given among men where we can take that message and we can translate men and women out of the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of God's dear son. And we as members of this great family of God dare not sit back and hold our peace. You know, every once in a while you got to say something, is that right? <laughs> as children of God, we've got to say something to somebody somewhere at some time about Jesus. And it's good for us to check from time to time to see how we're doing on our job. Are we telling people the good news of Jesus Christ? Are we sharing with people what they need to do in order to be translated from the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of God's dear son? I ask that question because sometimes I'm not so sure that even among us that we sometimes don't get a little bit embarrassed. Among us. That sometimes we are maybe a little bit reluctant. We don't always want to tell people about what we believe as members of the church of Christ. But if it's a member of the family of God, if it's our responsibility and we don't do it, who does it? God is not going to send angels down out of heaven to do it. Did you know that? It's not just the preachers or the preaching class's responsibility to share the gospel of Jesus Christ. And sometimes people are backing off on it because they believe that if you preach it, you might not be popular. Anybody in here like being popular? Sometimes folk are worried that if we preach it, if we teach it, folk are going to call us narrow-minded. You mean you think that there is salvation in only one church and that all of y'all are going to heaven? No, no, wait, hold up. Let's get this straight. Judgment begins at the house of God. <laughs> but if you are going to be saved, you must be in the church that has been purchased by the blood of Jesus Christ. And folk hear that sometimes from the pulpit, but they need to hear it from every one of us. Did you know that? Brother, sister, listen, hold not your peace. There's, this is not the time to be quiet. Some folk think if you preach it, then you're going to make enemies. Folk going to be mad at me. Did you know that there are folk mad at you already anyway? <laughs> and there are some folk that still don't like us anyway. As members of the family of God, we've got a job to do. And our responsibility is not to sit on the word of God. <clears throat> Brother, sister, listen. Don't hold your peace. Hold not your peace. You know, I like to get folk helping me with my lesson because I'm not sure everybody is always on the same page. So I always ask for assistance. Y'all look at the people around you. Now y'all look at somebody, put eyeballs on somebody and tell them, hold not your peace. <laughs> Vincent, did you tell some? Oh, okay, all right. <laughs> I'm looking. <laughs> hold not your peace. I know you're the song leader this morning, but hold not your peace. Brother, listen, sister, listen. This is the only power of God, the gospel of Jesus Christ. And if we hold it, if we don't share the word of God, then there are people out there that perhaps can come into the household and the family of God, but we haven't done our job. It was like the book of Ezekiel in Ezekiel chapter 3 when God told Ezekiel all of the things that the children of God had done. And Ezekiel sat down after eating the word of God and he was astonished for seven days. And God came back to him and told him, now listen, if you don't warn the wicked man, that same wicked man is going to die in his sins. But his blood will I require at your hands. We've got to do our job. We have a responsibility, and this is not to put anybody on a guilt trip, but brother, listen, sister, listen, there is room for growth in this great family of God. Now, by show of hands, by show of hands, how many folk got uh, room for one more person to sit on the seat, uh, on the row where you're sitting? By show of hands, how many people? Still got one more, room for one more? Uh, as, as long as we've got room, brother, our job is not yet done. It's not a guilt trip, but we want to feel God's house. We want to compel them to come in. We want them to know that they too can be a part of this great family of God. The Bible says in 2 Timothy chapter 4 and verse number 2. Preach the word. Be instant in season. 
out of season, reprove, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and doctrine. Preach the word, teach the word of God. All of us have this charge, all of us have this responsibility. What is our uh, motto for 2014? What was our motto for 2014? Every opportunity. And we want to seize, we want to realize every opportunity to tell somebody about Jesus. What do you think would happen if all of us, all of us, every week, every week we went out, every day of the week, we went out telling folk about, what do you think would happen? Somebody kind of like, ooh, Lord, have you met some folks over there at the Fifth Ward Church of Christ? There's somebody, every time, they want me to come to church. They want me to have a Bible class. They want me to study the Word of God. They want me to be a member of that. What would it be like if all of us did that every day of the rest of the year? It's a challenge before all of us. Brother, sister, listen. Don't hold your peace. Don't sit on your peace. It's important for us to share the Word of God. The obligation is all of ours. The Bible says in 2 Timothy chapter 4 and verse number 3, get this, did you know this? The Bible says, for the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine. Do you believe the Bible is right on this? The Bible says there will come a time. No, no, now this is not to the world that he's talking about. He's saying the time will come among us. The time will come among members of the family of God if we're not careful, brother. The time will come when folk will not endure sound doctrine. Do you know that sometimes in the church of Christ, folk will even get mad at you for preaching and teaching the word of God? The time will come. It's right there in your book. The time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, but after their own, what's your Bible say? After their own desires. Folk have their own agendas. And folk want to hear what they want to hear when they want to hear it. But here Paul is telling the young evangelist Timothy, hold not your peace. Speak and teach and preach the word of God wherever you go. For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, but will after their own lust heap to themselves teachers having itching ears. Tell us what we want to hear. Preach to us smooth things. Don't preach to us any challenging or hard things. But family, as members of the family of God, Hold not your peace. Keep on teaching. Keep on preaching the word of God. There comes a time when you've got to say something in this life. Is it not right? One of the brothers uh, at the church, and I'm not saying this was at Fifth Ward, y'all. This is an illustration that I'd heard, but uh, they went to the preacher and said, we got a problem with one of them brothers. <laughs> say, what's the problem? Say, that brother be cussing all the time. Y'all know any cussing Christians? I've heard brothers say before, well, you know, I'm like Peter. <laughs> you had to be careful. I was wondering if he's going to whoop out his sword and cut off an ear. <laughs> uh, but, but he said, uh, he, he be cussing. Yeah, yeah, he cussed. Uh, you need to talk to him. You need to talk to that brother. Somebody need to say something to him. He said, well, okay, well, what does he like to do? Well, he likes to fish. He said, okay, well, I'll tell you what. I'm going to go fishing with him and and I have a word with, I, I go out fishing, and they got in a boat together, he went out with the brother, and the preacher all the time got in his mind, I talked to this brother about this cussing that I was hearing about him. And they got out there, and that, that guy was just reeling in, fish out, throw, as soon as he throw his line off in the water, he reeling in a big one, he reeling in another, and the preacher sitting there, ain't even got a nibble on his line. And every once in a while, the brother would let something slip out. Oh, excuse me. I'm sorry, preacher. I'm sorry. You know, you know, I didn't mean to do that, brother. It's like, and the preacher's sitting there, and finally, he got a big hit on his line, bent that rod all the way down, and, and it was like, oh, and he was reeling him in and got him right up to the boat, and it was the biggest fish of all day in his first one, and he started pulling him out. He flipped off of the line. The preacher looked at that brother, he said, brother, somebody ought to say something. <laughs> there comes a time when you got to say something, brother. There comes a time when you got to say something, sister. You can't always hold your peace. It's time. Now, now, that's not what I'm saying we ought to say. We got to teach the gospel. We got to preach the word of God. And we need to know there comes a time when we simply dare not hold our peace. 
Hold not your peace. Speak and preach and teach the word of God. The obligation is all of ours. In Acts chapter 8 and verse number 4, the Bible says, Therefore, they that were scattered abroad, they went everywhere preaching the word of God. Brother, listen, sister, listen. We have the world to evangelize. And we are soldiers in the Lord's army and all of us have a message of the gospel of Christ to share with somebody the obligation, the duty, the responsibility is ours to preach the death, burial, and the resurrection of Jesus Christ. We got to get on the job and stay on the job until Jesus comes. Is that all right? And can somebody, can we agree today? Can we agree today? that this week I'm going to tell somebody about Jesus. Can we agree to do that? Woo, okay. I heard a two or three or four amens there. Oh, some of you saying, I don't, just move on with the lesson. Move on. But brother, listen, sister, listen, I'm trying to motivate myself as well as you this week. This week, Lord, spare us. I want to tell somebody about Jesus. Paul, Paul says to Timothy in 2 Timothy chapter 1 and verse number 8, he says, Be not thou therefore ashamed of the testimony of our Lord, nor me his prisoner, be, but be thou a partaker of, what's the word say? The afflictions of the gospel according to the power of God. Do you know that there are afflictions associated with sharing the word of God? We've been called to a fellowship of suffering. And brother, sister, listen, whatever it costs us to tell somebody about Jesus, whatever it costs us, it's worth the price. Every one of us has this great and awesome responsibility. Tell somebody, tell anybody, tell everybody the good news of Jesus Christ. In 2 Timothy chapter 1 and verse number 9, the Bible says, who hath saved us. God has saved us, notice, and called us with a holy calling. Not only has he saved us, he's called us to a holy calling. The Bible goes on to say, not according to our works. See, God has not rewarded us according to our works. Did you know that? If God rewarded us according to our works, uh, we'd be, all of us would be in big trouble. We would not be saved. He has not rewarded us according to our works. But notice what the Bible goes on to say. But according to his own purpose and grace, which was given us in Christ Jesus. Notice how long before the world began, God called us to this grace. This is a grace ministry that God has given us. Tell everybody and anybody that God has sent his son Jesus to die on Calvary's cross that they too might be a member of the family of God. Amen. Is there any job, is there any responsibility more awesome than that, that we can make the difference between where a person spends eternity by sharing the good news of Jesus Christ. An amazing thing that God has given to us and he purposed it in Christ before the world even began. God decided the mission, brother, sister, hold not your peace. Sometimes folk want to make us be quiet and we have succumbed, we've given in to the pressure to be quiet. Have you ever noticed that sometimes folk want to tell you how you ought to act? <laughs> it does happen, it does happen. I know that it happens because people sometimes uh, are a little bit embarrassed. Uh, we, we got folk visiting among us. Now, do y'all act better when you got folk uh, visiting at your house? Anybody been arguing with your husband or your wife all day long and somebody knock on the door? You go, oh, hello, good evening. How are you? <laughs> Come on in, why don't you? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. See, you know why people laugh about that? Because you know it happens. It happens over and over again. But now here again, and sometimes, sometimes we want to continue it on and, and, and you're going like, okay, be quiet right now. We do pick this up afterward, right? And, and sometimes we ought to hold our peace. But here, when it comes to sharing the word of God, we're under orders from God. Don't hold your peace. Be not quiet in terms of our worshiping God. I know sometimes uh, folk have told me, say, Brother Wilkson, I know you were there. I didn't see you, but I heard you saying amen. <laughs> uh, and... I said, yeah, okay. Uh, it's like, maybe, maybe was I saying amen too loud? 
And, and there are some places that you go, folk don't even say amen. Uh, some folk get upset because some folks sitting in the church house and, and somebody is waving their hands and somebody go like, oh, look at them, Lord, and we get embarrassed. Somebody saying amen, somebody waving their hand. Are you embarrassed? Are you ashamed? Why do we get embarrassed and ashamed for how other folks act sometimes? What other folks are doing? Uh, in first, correct, uh, first Chronicles chapter 16 and verse number 36, I want to say about this amen, saying uh, amen, you know, uh, the idea of saying amen, whatever, when, when we hear the word of God being proclaimed, if we're certifying that that is truth, then we're able to give a vent to it by saying amen. Or we say, may it be so by saying amen. I was sitting right there on one Sunday and uh, someone was visiting among us and the little boy was asking his dad, what are they saying? What are they saying? How come they're saying amen? He said, Shh, be quiet, be quiet. I I'll tell you about it later. And I don't even know if he knew. And sometimes I'm not sure that we know. <laughs> but the Bible says, the Bible says, blessed be the Lord God of Israel forever and ever. And what does it say? And all the people said, amen. All, how many of the folk? All the people said, amen. And what did they do? And amen. And they, Brother Smith, praise the Lord. <laughs> Is it all right to amen and praise the Lord? Right. Brother, listen, sister, listen. Some folk don't want you to say that. They want you to sit there and be quiet. <laughs> be quiet. Don't say anything. Don't do anything. People will try to get you to hold your peace. But there comes a time, brother, sister, listen. Don't hold your peace. Hold not thy peace. Amen. Comes a time when you just got to say something. People try to make us and mold us after their own will. The Bible says in Matthew chapter 20 and verse 30. I'll get a couple of scriptures in Matthew chapter 20 and verse 30. And also we're going to get Mark chapter 10 and verse number 47. Mark 10 and 47, Matthew 20 and 30. The Bible says, and behold, two blind men sitting by the wayside. When they heard that Jesus passed by, cried out, saying, have mercy on us, O Lord, thou son of David. And notice what happened. These men heard that Jesus was coming by. Anybody need help from Jesus this morning? These men, Jesus is going to be coming by. And I need some help from the Lord. And these two men sitting by the wayside said, Lord Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. They kind of got loud. Sometimes folk get loud and other folk get embarrassed. <laughs> These are the people of God that are sitting with them by the wayside and they're crying out, Jesus, have mercy on us. Notice in verse number 31, and the multitude. You know how much is a multitude? How many is a multitude? That's more than one or two, right? Everybody else wants, y'all be quiet, cut that out. We don't do that kind of stuff around here. Hush your mouth. Son of David, have mercy on me. The multitude said, hold thy peace. But he cried, the Bible says, the more, a great deal. Thou son of David, have mercy on me. There are folk come here that are burdened down and they're weighed down. And we cannot judge what other folk are doing in that respect. We don't know what kind of problems or troubles or trials or tribulations that they're going through. And they come to the house of God and they just want to say, Lord, have mercy on me. Amen. Brother, listen, sister, listen, we ought to be able to support one another as we come here to reach out in the most humble way we know how to praise the great God of heaven. Hold not your peace, my brother. Hold not your peace, my sister. The man in Mark uh, chapter 10 and verse number 47, we refer to him as blind Bartimaeus. There's even song that has blind Bartimaeus in the song. And Timaeus, the son of Timaeus, was sitting by the wayside and he heard according to verse number 47, and when he had heard it was Jesus of Nazareth, he began to cry out and say, Jesus, thou son of David, have mercy on me. And the same thing happened with Bartimaeus when he cried out, have mercy. The Bible says, what does your Bible say? How many? <clears throat> many, a whole bunch of folks were saying to him, hold your peace. But those two men that we read about in the book of Mark, uh, Matthew and Bartimaeus that we read about in Mark, 
the more folk told them to be quiet, <laughs> the louder they got. Y'all know anybody like that? The more you tell them to be quiet, the louder they get. What do you think you ought to do if you really want them to be quiet, number one? <laughs> if you want them to be quiet and the more you ask them to be quiet, the louder they get, then maybe you just ought to stop asking them to be quiet. <laughs> and, and here, here, uh, God told Paul, hold not your peace. And you know what? Bartimaeus kept crying out, thou son of David, have mercy on me. He kept on crying and the louder he got, have mercy on me. Other folks saying, shut up, be quiet. He kept on, Jesus, have mercy on me. And you know what? Jesus called for the two blind men. Jesus called for Bartimaeus and they received the blessing of the Lord. Amen. Well, I tell you, sometimes it's all right for us to be quiet. I understand that. But listen, brother, when we come to the house of God and everybody's singing songs of praise to the great God of heaven, it's not time to be quiet. Amen. Amen. It's not time to be quiet when we're singing praises to God. And this is not by way of reprimand. It's by way of encouragement. Brother, we come here to praise the great God of heaven. He brought us through the whole week and allowed us to come in here and sit down on cushion seats. In God a good God. <laughs> Air conditioning. When it's hot outside. Heat when it's cold. You can get a drink of water on the outside. Isn't God good to us? <laughs> God is better to us than we deserve. But maybe you haven't got there yet. I just want to come here. I don't want to be quiet. I want to say thank you God. Because I know you've been better to me than I deserve. And I'm not going to hold my peace. And I don't want to be quiet because I want to say, thank you, God. Thank you, Lord. And you know, I'm going to tell you, sometimes, sometimes it just, you can't win. Anybody ever heard that statement? You can't win for losing. That comes to be a, a, a real true statement because you just can't, do you have you learn you can't please everybody? Amen. Some folk, no matter what you do, they're going to find fault with it. Anybody know? Y'all just keep looking this way in case they're sitting right beside you. Because sometimes, you know, sometimes it's like, no, it don't matter what I say or do, it's all wrong. Because you know, sometimes, sometimes you say something. Now I have to ask my wife sometimes. I tell my wife, uh, I say something to my wife, and, and she don't say nothing. She holding up. I say, did, did you hear what I said? <laughs> she said, yeah, I heard you. <laughs> you didn't say nothing. <laughs> no further comment. Yeah, I heard you. <laughs> But sometimes we're quiet and folk, folk can't even help that and, and accept it. When it was quiet. Look at this. Look at this. I want you to look in 1 Samuel chapter 1 and verse number 15. You remember a, a sister by the name of Hannah, right? You remember a sister by the name of Hannah and she was in the bitterness of her soul. And she went to the house of God and she's sitting there and she's pouring out her heart to God. But she's praying to God, talking to God, but her lips are moving and no words are coming out. And Eli, the priest, come through, and he see there. And you, you walk by somebody, and, they, and they, they, they lips are moving, but you don't hear the words coming out. What do you think? Mm, I don't know, Lord. You see, we come, we come with so many different judgments. Oh, I don't know what's wrong with him.